Hi guys, welcome back to another episode in our series for beginners woodworking on a budget. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a new investment that I've made in my workshop, which is the Vogvigo Pro 3018 CNC machine. Uh, we're going to be having a look at the software that I'm using, which is Easel by Inventables. And we're basically going to have a look also at some of the things that I've been creating over this first week. So big shout out to all of my new subscribers, because uh, I've had quite a few new subscribers recently. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe down below. I really appreciate the support. So here's a look at the setup that I'm using in my workshop. I have my laptop set up to control the CNC machine. I tether the laptop onto my mobile phone because I have no Wi-Fi out in my workshop. This is a preloaded uh, design on the program. I've got my workpiece, which is Elm, set into the CNC machine. These are the 0.2 millimeter, 20 degree V-groove bits that come with the machine. And I've also purchased some end mill bits of varying sizes from Amazon. I'll drop a link to those in the description below. We're gonna walk through Easel, the software that I'm using now. Uh, if you haven't already, you want to sign, it, sign up to Easel. Uh, you've just gotta put in your uh, email address basically. Here's a few of the designs that I've already played with on Easel and this is what opens up when you select a new workpiece. We've got the material that you're using which you can change in this drop down box here from a selection of different materials. This changes if you go for Easel Pro um, which is a subscription service. I'm just using the free version at the moment, which I'm sure if you've just purchased a CNC machine, you will also do the same. So now we can manipulate the size of the material um, to mimic your workpiece that you've put into the CNC machine. Uh, I'm just changing these dimensions so as they suit the workpiece that I've got. You can see as we change the sizes, it changes the um, the grid view to the left, and it also changes the material view on the right hand side. We can click and manipulate the material, so as when we've actually put a design in, we can look at it closely. On the left hand side here, we've got a load of different tabs. We can put a shape in, we can freehand some drawing, we can put a text box in and there's lots of different free fonts that are available in this version or we could put a symbol in if we had the pro version now for today i want to be focusing on the image trace which i think is a very very good tool in this particular software basically we can pull any image either a stock photo out of our documents or we can pull an image offline and we can import it and trace that image and we can carve out as much or as little of the image as we want by changing the tabs on the left hand side. I think this is a really good feature that's available in the free version because even though you haven't got access to all of the templates that you would do in the pro version, basically if you can find the image that you want on the internet, you can import it and carve it anyway. Now I'm happy with the design, I can bring it onto the workpiece. I can expand it and shrink it. I can also rotate it, manipulate it how I like. Uh, I also change the cut depth here with this bar on the right hand side. I can also change how it does the cut pattern. I could select 
just for it to cut on path, inside, outside the path, or I could select to cut the pocket, which is what I'm going to do. As I change all of these parameters, I also get a visual on the right hand side how it will look in the piece. Now that we've got this all ready, it's time to have a look at the bits that we're going to be using. We can select the bits just up here, and unfortunately the V-bit option is only available in the Pro version, um, so we can't carve with V-bits in the free version. But we can change the size of the bit that we're using in this little box here, so no matter what bits that you buy, whether you get the cheap ones from Amazon or use the ones that come with it, you can change the size there. Nice thing about this is you can select a roughing bit and a detail bit. This means that your cutting process is going to be sped up. You don't have to try and find a bit that's going to do everything, but it might take you nine hours to do. We can also simulate the cut so we can see how long this is going to take to make. Uh, it gives us the time for the rough cut and for the detail cut. So we don't actually have to stand with the machine, we can just let it do its thing and walk away. Before we get too carried away, we could do to set the machine up. Now, I have the Volvigo Pro, like I told you. So this is how I set my machine up. Um, you can see that I'm just selecting basically everything as other in this software because it's easel, it's not made for this particular CNC machine, but it will work it. We want to set the RPM, I think this is set to 12,000, but it should be set to 10,000 unless you upgrade the motor. Um, now, you need to look for the COM port, which it tells you how to do that. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Mine was COM port 4. Uh, then basically you go through these options to make sure that the machine is doing what it should be doing. Um, you can see that I'm clicking these buttons here, the machine's moving. So now the laptop has control over the machine. We just click yes for all of these. It's going to give us the option for the machine to take control or um, for us to have control. And then we check that the spindle's turning on, which it is. And we can turn it off. And we'll do one more on off just for good measure. Next, it's going to give us the option for uh, automatic homing, which um, we don't have a homing position with this machine. We don't have a Z probe. Now we're ready to carve. We could do a test carve or we could just get on with the piece that we've made. Oh my goodness. The machine is set up, now it's time to actually carve it. Um, so we click carve, we need to make sure that the piece is secure. We're going to select whether we want to do the rough pass or the detail pass first. I'm going to do the rough pass with the 2mm bit. Now we need to zero the machine, which is basically position the mill to the bottom left hand corner. And I'm doing this by using the keys on my keyboard. Now we raise the bit, we turn the spindle on, and we confirm that the spindle is turned on, and then we press carve, and away it goes. Before everybody gets panicky, this footage is sped up. I'm not running the machine flat out. Uh, I think I'd break my bit and I'd probably break the machine.
Now, once it's finished the cut, it's going to ask you, does it look good or does it not? I'm going to say it looks fine. And then we're going to set it up to carve the detail cut using the smaller bit. In the top left-hand corner, you're going to see me changing over the bit from the rough cut bit to the detail bit, which is a 2mm to a 1mm bit. It's worth noting at this point that when it comes to changing over the bits, you must make sure that the only thing that you change is the z-axis up and down. You don't want to change the xy axis because that's going to change the position of the bit on your carving. Um, so simply move the z-axis up so as you can release the bit and pull it out. And then once you've changed over the bit, you want to drop it back down using the same setup method as you did in the first place. Another thing that's worth a mention is that we can change the feed rate. This will speed up or slow down the process, but this is very much a trial and error. Easel will give you a, a set speed, which is based on the material that you're using and the size of the bit that you're using. But this is very much trial and error, I find. I think that it's slightly fast, um, really, for a smaller bit. You can see that I've changed it to 110% and here you can see that I've actually had to change my bit because unfortunately I broke my first bit. So it does run a little bit fast, make sure that you don't get impatient with it and you just let it do its thing. So here's how this one turned out. I'll be honest, I'm not too impressed with it. In fact, I ended up redoing it. Um, but this is one of the first pieces that I did into hardwood. Um, and as you can see, as the week progressed, I did some work with softwoods and the finish was so much better. Uh, I personally feel like for the money, the machine is absolutely fantastic. I think that using Easel as a free software is, again, incredible. Um, and if you're thinking about buying a CNC, I hope that this video helps you in making the decision to go for it. Uh, thanks again for watching. And please, if you can, like and subscribe, share to your friends. And yeah, you guys have a great day.